everyone, welcome to the first episode of Bloodborne Lore Bites. I'm Brutus, and in this series we'll be looking at small components of Bloodborne's lore and environmental storytelling in very close detail. Now, lore in video games generally means the background mythology of a game's world, but in the Souls games, where written information is so scarce but environmental information is so rich, lore is often presented in extremely non-direct ways, so we're going to be doing a bit of detective work. In this episode, we'll focus on the Great Bridge. Now, geographically, the Great Bridge runs between the neighboring cities of Yarnum, also known as Central Yarnum, and the Cathedral Ward. It runs directly over the Church of the Good Chalice, down in the valley of Old Yarnum. You can't actually see the bridge if you look up from that level, and it really gives a sense of the scale of the structure, like it's absolutely fucking massive. According to Gilbert, the Great Bridge is the main path that connects Central Yarnum to the Cathedral Ward, and in fact many believe it to be the only way across. I see, but the Great Bridge is the only way to the Cathedral Ward, and during the hunt the bridge is closed. Hmm. At this point, I want to point out that the Great Bridge strongly resembles the Charles Bridge in Prague. Now this makes sense given that Miyazaki supposedly visited the Czech Republic for inspiration on Bloodborne's urban aesthetics. The bridge we find in-game is littered with abandoned carriages and dead horses and surrounded by discarded luggage. There's a lot of these assets scattered throughout the level and it seems to point at residents of Yarnum attempting to escape into the ward only to be stopped, maybe by the Cleric Beast. By the time we awaken in Yarnum, the streets are already overrun by blood-crazed hunters. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. Now, based on the amount of abandoned carriages and luggage around the city, not just on the bridge itself, I get the impression that the Knight of the Hunt caught the city by surprise and many people tried to leave in a hurry. So maybe the hunt is not a predetermined event so much, but it's a sort of spontaneous thing that happens without warning that the church has protocols in place for. However, there are a few things that contradict this theory. Firstly, if we follow the length of the Great Bridge to its end, we find that it just sort of runs up against a dead end. There are four pedestrian entries onto the bridge, but none of them are large enough for a carriage. So if this is the case, how did we wind up with all these carriages on the bridge? Personally, I think the key to this is this closed portcullis at the end of the bridge. It's certainly big enough for carriages to pass through, and it would be able to handle a considerable amount of foot traffic as well. Additionally, the bridge seems to be related to this square with the fountain, which contains a few horse-drawn carts of its own. There's a lot of shut gates along this road, some of which we can unlock, but if we follow the path all the way through, we arrive back at Iosefka's clinic. So my theory is this. The bridge is the primary way for getting in and out of the cathedral ward, but its use is primarily commercial rather than pedestrian. It's used as the main avenue to transport bottles of healing blood into central Yarnum. Carriages containing precious cargo leave the cathedral ward and deposit them at the end of the bridge, where they are distributed throughout the city like milk or taken directly to Yosefka's infirmary. If this is the case, then the carriages on the bridge weren't fleeing into the cathedral ward, but were coming out from that direction. They were just on the wrong side of the gates when they were lowered, trapping their passengers out on the night of the hunt. Lastly, let's take a look at this unopenable door at the end of Cleric Beast's boss room. A German spy has already confirmed that at one point this door acted as a shortcut for later in the game, presumably opened from the other side once one reaches the Cathedral Ward via Aqueduct. Illusory Wall also tested and confirmed that the door lines up geographically from both sides using Shining Coins. However, in the current build of the game, Central Yarnum isn't even fully loaded when viewed from the Cathedral Ward side, and this shortcut doesn't serve any real function since one can warp directly to the Great Bridge or Erden Chapel. I get the impression that the Great Bridge and Cleric Beast were originally much more integral to the player's progression through the game. This makes sense to me insofar as it alleviates the weird disparity between how iconic Cleric Beast is and how comparatively unimportant to the game's lore and progression he winds up being. Everything in the opening half hour of the game sets him up to be this crucial step forward, and yet when you finally defeat him you find nothing but a dead end. Personally, I think crossing the Great Bridge was the main way through the game in an earlier build of the game. Of course, this is pure speculation, 
As it is, this path doesn't make any sense. It would render Gascoigne optional and risk the player missing out on his questline, as well as the uh, Blood Gem tool. So, unless Miyazaki and his team talk about scrapped ideas for progression sometime in the future, we'll never know just exactly how the Great Bridge was supposed to function and fit into the rest of the game. And that concludes the first episode of Bloodborne Lore Bites. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm making more and hoping to continue this series.